Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, police uncover an illegal gambling room on the city's northwest side. More details just ahead. Plus, local hospital leaders are asking everyone to do their part as hospitals get closer to reaching capacity. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 77 degrees to start your Friday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the 4th of July weekend look like? We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. Good morning. Friday, July 3rd. You have made it to Friday. Some people already on their holiday weekends. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us this morning. Let's get a check of the forecast with Mike. And Mike, it seems like that humidity is broken just a little bit. It is more comfortable this morning. Of course, right. we did have lower humidity yesterday afternoon. That then allowed temperatures to soar up to 99. Didn't quite hit 100, and we're going to be up in that ballpark again today. But yeah, it is. I mean, it's not just that that wet blanket you run yeah, into when you step out stuff. the door this morning. So it is more pleasant. Temperatures are actually down about uh, what five degrees or so compared to where we were at this time yesterday. Yesterday we only bottomed out at 80, and I think we're going to be maybe even dropping down a couple of more notches here. 76 Boulder, 77 in Canyon Lake, and dew point temperatures still they're up in the 70s, but. Just to compare to yesterday, we were a lot of 76s, 75s around here, and these numbers are down about, oh, four or five degrees, and that makes a whole heck of a lot of difference. And then we will see the dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere drop down later on this afternoon. So we don't have near the uh, heat index like we had, because remember it was like mid upper 80s yesterday for heat index readings, even 90s this early in the morning. Dust has been going up a little bit. You can probably see that yesterday. You notice a little more in the sky. Everything else, mold and pigweed grass are on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, 92 at noon and well, that shouldn't say 100 going for 99 today, but a lot of folks are going to be hitting 100. We are going to see triple digits, though, as we go in toward the weekend. Yeah, pretty good chance at that rain. Nothing for the next couple of days, maybe next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Uh, not much, Mike. Hope everyone's having a great start to their Friday morning. All right, no accidents to report. We had some accidents here about an hour ago. Nothing major. Things are looking good right now all around the city. A lot of green on the screen. That's good news for everyone out there. Let's take a look at the trans guide now. All right, let's see what we have. Well, oh, this is... Not working all good. Not much going on though, and things are flowing smoothly out there. Max Myra, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police responding to what they thought was a cutting on the city's northwest side overnight, but instead they uncovered an illegal gambling room. All of this happening at 10 o'clock last night. This is the 1800 block of Bandera Road. Police say about 19 people were inside that room at the time. Police telling us that at least two people detained for warrants during the investigation. The rest given citations. As COVID-19 cases continue to increase, it could be a while before we see any relief. Hospital CEOs in our area say it will take about two weeks to see a change if we all act now. The urgent message to avoid public gatherings come as we start this 4th of July weekend. It has to be done at an individual level. If you love your country, you will wear a mask and you will do what the mayor and the judge have told us to do. What you do today will determine what happens two weeks from now, whether you're in the emergency room with no beds in the end. We all play a part. Bear County saw hundreds of COVID-19 cases added in this latest report for a new total of 12,878. The death toll has increased by four to a total of 115 people. The number of recoveries is up to more than 5,100, but there are still 7,600 people fighting the illness. Hospital capacity now at 13%, meaning there are about 574 staffed beds available. That's a big change compared to the last report when capacity was at 27%. Hospital beds at Bamsey and the VA hospital are no longer included in the hospital capacity calculation. Since they're military hospitals, not everyone can be treated there. And now a local woman stepping out and sharing her experience with this pandemic. 24-year-old Nicole Miranda quarantined after recently found out that she tested positive. Nicole says she is now taking extra precautions at home since she lives with her parents. She says she does not know where she contracted the coronavirus. Meanwhile, local hospital leaders asking the community to do their part as hospitals inch closer and closer to reaching that capacity. Wear your mask, wash your hands. It does happen that you can get it. Some people may tell you that it's just like the flu, except it's 50 times more likely to kill you than the flu is. 
Harrison says two weeks ago they had 75 confirmed patients, and as of last night, they were at 343. Wow. The CDC is now forecasting up to 160,000 deaths in the U.S. by July 25th. That's only three weeks away. In a late night tweet, President Donald Trump once again arguing that new cases are rising at a record rate only because we are ramping up testing. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, hospitals across the country are bracing for the 4th of July. It makes me really nervous. Um, I know after the 4th that we could potentially see another surge. If things don't change and people don't take it a little more serious in the next two weeks, you know, who knows where we will be. Huge crowds and holiday parties threatening to set off a new surge of coronavirus infections, even as the nation's top doctor warns the U.S. is already at risk of losing control. It's quite disturbing. And we're setting records practically every day of new cases. That clearly is not the right direction. Hospitals in Arizona are struggling with a surge of patients. And in Texas, cities are closing beaches in hopes of controlling crowds. The governor reversing course, now mandating masks after one third of the state reported a record number of new cases Thursday. COVID-19 is not going away. In fact, it's getting worse. Now more than ever, action by everyone is needed. Houston now reporting one in five COVID-19 tests are coming back positive. Some ICUs have hit full capacity. Meanwhile, in Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks, where Memorial Day pool parties made national headlines due to the lack of social distancing, authorities are trying to prepare for record crowds this weekend. While Washington state is now allowing businesses to refuse service to anyone not wearing a face covering. And in West Hollywood, no mask will now cost you $300. It comes as California reports nearly 10,000 new cases in just 24 hours. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 437, 77 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, since a lot of us have been stuck at home for months now, many are looking forward to some summer road trips. We'll tell you where many are headed. And next, details on an important warning over a potentially poisonous ingredient found in some hand sanitizers. That's next on GMSA. And taking a live look outside with live cam, 77 degrees this morning. We are headed toward a hot 4th of July weekend. Mike's forecast is coming up. Good morning and welcome back. 439 this Friday morning in your morning headlines. Stocks ending this week in the green and the NASDAQ composite index soaring to a new closing record. The market closed for today because of the 4th of July holiday. But this week investors cheered a better than expected jobs report after a record 4.8 million jobs added domestically here in June. The unemployment rate falling to 11.1%. The Dow gaining 92 points. The NASDAQ and S&P 500 also finishing higher. The Food and Drug Administration has issued a warning over a potentially poisonous ingredient found in some hand sanitizers. The FDA says some hand sanitizer products could be contaminated with methanol, which can be life threatening if ingested. It can also be toxic if absorbed through the skin. Methanol exposure can cause a host of symptoms, including nausea, headaches and dizziness, amnesia, even seizures. The use of ethanol, alcohol-based hand sanitizers, is still recommended by the FDA when soap and water are unavailable. The FDA warns that although hand sanitizers with methanol have been recalled, some of the tainted products could still be in stores. And a law enforcement source says that eight Secret Service agents initially assigned to Vice President Mike Pence's recent trip to Arizona, eight of them testing positive for COVID-19. Now, this was right before Vice President Mike Pence scheduled to travel to Arizona. The positive test reportedly forced a one day delay so the Secret Service could swap in healthy agents. The Vice President scheduled to go to Arizona on Tuesday, but delayed the trip until Wednesday. In a statement, the Secret Service Director of Communications says the health and safety of their workforce remains the agency's highest priority. Pence's trip originally included several more public stops, but the trip was scaled back because of the recent surge in cases in Arizona. And time now, 441, 77 degrees out. Still ahead this morning, many stir-crazy Americans getting ready to go on their summer road trips, but new restrictions might limit where they can go. And next, as we head into the weekend, we're going to show you some great 4th of July deals retailers are offering customers and offering you right now. Welcome back. Just about 4.45 this morning. Summer road trips are as much a part of summer as fireworks and the beach. ABC's Gio Benitez with today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, the surprising way the coronavirus is changing the summer vacation. Millions hitting the road and heading to rural destinations like mountain regions for hiking and exploring. We've never seen anything like this. Heather Greenwood Davis is a National Geographic contributing writer. A lot of people are going to cabins. They're going to rural areas. Yeah, for sure. So things like dude ranches or short term rentals or national parks. Airbnb telling us 20% of all bookings this weekend are rural areas. Cabins are among the most searched on the site. A huge shift from this time last year. Since April, 60% of the bookings are within 300 miles of a person's home. And coming up at 8 a.m., the must-know tips to get the most out of your summer vacation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And heading into this holiday weekend, retailers continuing to offer special 4th of July sales. Those haven't been canceled. Many are discounting goods to entice you to buy. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some deals that will save you some money. Before the star-spangled fireworks, retailers are popping deals. But are you getting the most bang for your buck? There is some holiday hype to it. You know, not every deal is going to be a good deal. So Consumer Reports deal guru Samantha Gordon searched the sales. First up for that backyard barbecue. My favorite grill deal of the holiday weekend is the Monument Grills gas grill. This grill, normally $400 at Lowe's, is slashed by 70 bucks. Several retailers are discounting large appliances. Retailers have realized that people need to replace these items, especially spending more time at home. Like this LG fridge, Best Buy cut the price by 600 bucks. Need a mattress? She suggests this avocado green now reduced by $200. For tech, do we typically see or will we see uh, especially good deals on, say, laptops or uh, headphones or those kinds of things? Uh, you're a little bit better off waiting more towards the holidays themselves and Black Friday to score those deals, but we are seeing some deals. So if you're in the market for a new laptop, the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 is $769 at Amazon right now. It usually costs about $100 more. And these JBL Live Wireless Noise Canceling Headphones, Amazon cut the price by 50 bucks. If vacation is looking outdoorsy, REI has discounted some camping gear and spring clothing. Old Navy's marked it down as much as 60%. And if you want to keep your distance, online deals mirror those in store. And there's always curbside pickup. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, Myra, anything on the wish list? No. <laughs> I've probably been doing too much Amazoning during this quarantine, so I need to just bring it down. Bring it down a notch. Yeah. The laptop deal, the Microsoft Surface. That was interesting. $100 okay. off. All right. I saw you make it. Oh, yeah. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. <laughs> Let's get a check of what's going out there, going on on the roads out there with Officer Nick Solis. Good morning. Good morning, Myra. Yeah, things are looking good right now uh, all across the city. If, you, if you're headed to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. You got time for a pit stop. Things are looking good. Let's just take a look at the trans guide. Tent at the Y looking very smooth. Smooth right now. One car on the roadway there, looking good. Ten at Colorado, the same just down the road. That's looking smooth. Uh, what else do we have here? Ten at UTSA Boulevard on the northwest side. Oh, this look, no one's out this morning. And uh, 1604 Military Highway. That's not a good shot there, but still looking good. <laughs> All good news. Yep. It's gonna be hot this weekend. Really? Yeah. So we didn't hit 100 yesterday. Nope. Now Are we gonna hit it today at the airport? Uh, it, I'm. I'm thinking 99 again today just okay. because we have a little bit of a cooler Couldn't just start. bump us into the triple digits? So why? Why are you so <laughs> It's a mental <laughs> thing. It's like, oh, it's all summer, week, it's 4th of July weekend. Week we've been trying to keep it a 99. Here you show up and try to push it I know, I know. People are like, no, I like no, to no, push, here, push like, it a little bit. Over eager. We're, we're San Antonio. Here. Just so. wait <laughs> for the weekend. So, but a lot of folks saw triple digit temperatures like on this thermometer. What's that? About 106 in uh, Atascosa. Yeah. A um, lot of, you know, 100s, 105s, especially down to the uh, south and to the southwest. Not only today, but also the next couple of days. And maybe late next week. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, we still have clouds around there this morning, but it is much more pleasant morning compared to yesterday. Temperatures, even though we're uh, three above normal right now, they're down about five, six, in some cases, seven degrees compared to yesterday. A lot of the eighties yesterday and the dew point temperatures are down about uh, four or five degrees on average. Remember yesterday we were seeing some like 77, 78s for dew points around Lotus. Um, we had a lot of 75, 76s and just a few degrees when you get up into the 
70s with these dew points makes a whole lot of difference. So this is it's still really humid out there, but this is a whole lot better than what it was. So we don't have quite as extreme of uh, heat index right now. It's down about 10 degrees compared to yesterday, and we will see the dew point temperatures drop down later on this afternoon. So it's going to be much more pleasant and we'll go through that same process. So therefore, we're not really going to have that much actually of a heat index to deal with forecasting 99 for a high temperature. And when the air is dry enough, then it doesn't feel any really hotter than what the actual air temperature is. And again, this is in the shade. You get in the direct sun and not only are you feeling the air temperature, but also the sun is heating you up. So that's why you really got to stay in the shade. And we do have heat index readings uh, in the low hundreds over the, uh, the weekend. Now, dew points are going to be staying low in the afternoons through the weekend. So it will be comfortable in the shade this weekend, albeit very hot because the dry air heats up a lot more easily than uh, moist air does. Then the humidity comes back in here next week. And hopefully with that extra humidity, we get some little little something to nudge a couple of uh, showers to, to try and pop up around here. As far as the dust, you probably saw yesterday that it was uh, it was there and it's going to be sticking around throughout most of the weekend and he had kind of can kind of make you sneeze, irritate your nose just a little bit, and you get that kind of orangey glow, but it does look like the dust should start to uh, thin out a little bit as we head on into the uh, the first part of next week. As far as the forecast today, we are going to be up into the low 90s already at noon, partly cloudy skies. Got a few clouds hanging around there this morning, and the humidity will continue to drop off. So we're going to be uh, 99 later on this afternoon. Again, not too humid. A little more comfortable in the shade, but you know, just blazing hot and then going for those triple digits. There you go, Max. Just what you're asking for. Really? No. Triple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you, Myra. <laughs> triple digit reading Saturday, Sunday. I think a few more clouds come in here. First part of the week, uh, it'll hold temperatures down slightly. Hopefully this does not look good. This is really wishful thinking, uh, to be honest with you, about Tuesday, Wednesday, the chances of rain. And then it looks like we, uh, as of right now, are going to be heating up again in toward next weekend. You spoil me, Mike. I asked just for one day. You gave me three. Read the tea. <laughs> <laughs> I just, good Lord. Thank you, Mike. 451, 77 degrees out. Up next, rapper Vanilla Ice responding after being forced to cancel a performance in Austin due to coronavirus concerns. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers this morning. Pick three, nine, seven, two, fireball, zero. Daily four, seven, three, three, four, fireball, five. Cash five, six, 12, 13, 29, 32. Lotto Tex or Texas two step rather one four twenty two thirty and eighteen. Good morning, welcome back and happy Friday. Four fifty five this morning. Rest. There's so many puns. There's yes. so many puns. Please, it's gonna be share some. icy weekend. For Vanilla Ice, the rapper is sharing his reaction. I could do better than that. Sharing his reaction after canceling a trip to Austin because of this pandemic. Yes, his show has been melted. Ah, but I'm... It's, give, give me at least till 5 a.m. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's 4th of July weekend, and what better way to spend it than by streaming movies and TV shows? And the wait is finally over for Hamilton. The filmed version of the smash hit historical hip-hop Broadway musical with the original cast is finally available today on Disney+. Plus. Good afternoon, Babysitter's Club. Another highly anticipated new show for people of a certain generation, The Babysitter's Club, is now on Netflix. <laughs> Vanilla Ice, collaborating and listening, canceling a planned concert today in Austin, Texas because of coronavirus concerns after receiving a lot of backlash when the story went viral this week. Uh, basically, I'm not going. <laughs> I, I, I listen to my fans. I hear all you people out there. I didn't know the numbers were so crazy in Austin. The venue, the Emerald Point Bar and Grill, can hold 5,000, but capacity was going to be capped at 450. The show, along with a Saturday performance by 90s group Color Me Bad, will be rescheduled. Meanwhile, Conan O'Brien will be the first late night talk show host to stop doing a show from home and go back to work on a stage starting Monday on TBS from a small theater in L.A. Guests will still be interviewed remotely, no audience and a limited staff and crew on site. And one of the biggest stars in Hollywood with a birthday today, three time Oscar nominee Tom Cruise is 58, while actress Olivia Munn is 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. So did you cancel your trip to Austin to see... Vanilla Ice. You know what? I actually heard that very few tickets had been sold. Not a surprise. So I'm wondering if that had a little something mm. to do with the cancellation, too.
When in doubt, blame the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah. 457, 77 degrees out. Still ahead in our next half hour, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden continue taking jabs at each other ahead of this holiday weekend. And your kids may already be talking about this one. Marvel's Captain America debuting in the popular Fortnite video game ahead of the holiday weekend. More details ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, universities in and around San Antonio making changes to their learning plans because of the new surge in COVID cases. No social distancing expected at the president's event in Mount Rushmore tonight. I'm Inez de in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Let's take a look outside with live cam this morning. A little break in that humidity, but will those triple digits be just around the corner? We'll talk to Mike here in a few minutes. Good morning and welcome back Friday, July 3rd. You have made it to Friday. Some of you already on your holiday weekend. Enjoy. We're glad you're up with us this morning. But of course, we're all trying to social distance mm -hmm. right this weekend. But being outside, that's a good option. So what are our weather choices out there, Mike? Hot, hot, and hot again. I'll so. take A, B, and C. <laughs> yes, indeed, because we are definitely looking at 100 degrees. If we don't hit it today, I'm forecasting 99 today. Oh, watch out. I know. Heads I up. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Hey. Uh, yeah, it's a very good shot of hitting it officially here in town tomorrow of uh, 100 degrees. Yesterday, we got up to 99, and partly due to the fact that the air dried out in the afternoon, these dew point temperatures really dropped down. Right now, uh, 77 degrees. Now, we're still above normal, normal low being 74. However, these numbers are down uh, just to compare to yesterday when it was just a just almost tough to walk outside. Uh, we were well up in the low to even some mid 80s yesterday morning, well above normal. And these numbers, albeit still humid, the dew points up in the 70s, um, they're down about four, in some cases close to five degrees compared to uh, yesterday. Yesterday we had a dew point right around 75 degrees here in town. So 71, like I said, still humid, but a lot more comfortable. And then these numbers are going to be dropping down later on this afternoon. Uh, so we have a heat index right now of 79 as opposed to about the mid to upper 80s like yesterday. And then just add about 20 to this. That's uh, the forecast high temperature today. By the way, dust is has been and is increasing. Uh, everything else is on the low side. You could see that yesterday. Some of that dust kind of hanging in the atmosphere, that that orangey tint to the sky. Bit more pleasant this morning yeah, compared to yesterday. And then mostly sunny. It is going to be hot, but not too humid. And then going into the weekend, as I mentioned, we are going to be, uh, I think, a very good chance of hitting 100 officially for the first time this season here in town. Next week, hopefully, hopefully, a shower or two. because We could use it. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Not much right now, Mike. Things are looking good. If you're headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Things look great out there. Not No accidents to report. Construction is very minimal. Things are looking good on the main highways. Just take a look at these drive times. 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10, six minutes. And if you're 281 southbound from Bovardi to 1604, six minutes. So really good times there. Taking a look outside, 10 in Frio, inbounds and outbounds looking great right now. Very, very light traffic. 10 at Crossroads, just uh, south of there looking uh, wonderful. And uh, 35 at Benz Engelman on the northeast side, blowing smoothly. All right, everyone, make sure you have a wonderful day. Get to work safely, wear that seatbelt, go the speed limit, and have a great day. Uh, Max Myra, back to you. All right, thanks, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police say a drunk driver crashed into a six inch gas main at a northwest side apartment complex overnight. This happened just after 1 a.m. at the Windbury Apartments in the 4500 block of Gardendale. Police say following that crash, natural gas could actually be heard flowing out of the pipe. CPS Energy was called out to shut it down. No one was evacuated from any apartments. SAPD says the driver of that car was detained on suspicion of DWI. Well, 2020, we have dealt with a lot, obviously the pandemic, but remember, it still is a big election year and a sign that the 2020 presidential campaign is getting underway. President Donald Trump, former Vice President Joe Biden continue taking jabs at each other as we head into this holiday weekend. ABC's Inez de la Catera has the latest from Washington.
As he faces growing backlash for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, President Trump gearing up for a 4th of July celebration at Mount Rushmore. Thousands expected to attend. South Dakota's governor revealing there would be no social distancing and that masks would be optional, prompting concern from Native American leaders worried the president's photo op may put tribal members at risk. We won't be social distancing. We're asking them uh, to come, be ready to celebrate, to enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that we have in this country. Large parts of the country are experiencing an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases, something 2020 rival Joe Biden calls a direct consequence of... of Donald Trump's bungled leadership and the total mismanagement of this crisis from the start. But President Trump insists... Our health experts continue to address the temporary hotspots in certain cities. The president choosing instead to focus on the economy. New unemployment numbers showing three out of 10 Americans who lost their jobs during the shutdowns now back at work. Our economy is roaring back. The former vice president again taking aim. Trump wants to declare his health crisis over and unemployment solved. Unfortunately, he's deadly wrong on both fronts. And overnight, we learned that Vice President Pence had to delay a trip to Arizona earlier this week after Secret Service agents tested positive for COVID-19. It's the second time in as many weeks that Secret Service agents have tested positive while preparing for a presidential or vice presidential trip. In de la Quintera, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, a reminder, the testing site at Pre-K for SA West has been canceled, but the walk-up testing site at Kazin Middle School will continue. They're going to be up and running this morning, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 300 free tests will be conducted. This is on Gillette Boulevard. The walk-up testing site will also be running Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. as well. Texas State University campuses in San Marcos and Round Rock are now switching gears as coronavirus cases continue to rise. The university had originally planned to have some students return to face-to-face -face learning on Monday. Now the university is planning to stick with remote learning at least until the fall semester. In a statement, the university says, quote, the only courses that will remain face-to-face -face are those that require a face-to-face -face component for licensure or degree requirements, end quote. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the fall. Yeah, absolutely. Time now, 506, 77 degrees out. Still ahead, Kobe Bryant will soon grace two covers of a popular sports video game franchise. And Taco Bell has a brand new menu item for them to try. We're going to tell you about the grilled cheese burrito. Huh. We're going to talk about that next. <laughs> so by both of our faces, might need to lay off that one. They're always coming up with something there. Let's take a look outside with live cam right now. 77 degrees. Looks like it's a bit clearer out there than it has been this time the last couple of days. We'll talk to Mike in just a minute. Welcome back 510 this morning in your morning consumer headlines. Home Depot is changing its rope sales practices after nooses were found hanging in one of its North Carolina stores. Home Depot released a statement saying it is appalled by the incident. The company has now decided to sell shorter pre cut lengths of rope instead of rope wrapped on large spools. This comes as businesses and institutions across the country are currently having conversations about systemic racism. And Apple now closing down more of its stores that were just recently reopened. About 30 more of the company's stores have had to close again because of this recent surge in COVID cases. In all, about 77 stores shutting down. No word on when they're going to reopen. And Taco Bell leveling up in the comfort food department with their new grilled cheese burrito. It's the fast food restaurant's latest creation. It's a flour tortilla filled with beef, rice, a three cheese blend, crunchy red strips, chipotle sauce, and reduced fat sour mm. cream. Reduced fat, that's the, that, that's the angle we're going <laughs> All those things. It's all hugged by a layer of grilled cheese. Mm. It's available now at Taco Bell locations nationwide. Ha. Huh. Well, there, there it is. Well, with the 4th of July weekend beginning today, a lot of travelers expect to hit the roads for trips and for getaways. TxDOT has released its road safety reminders for Texans on the road. Sarah Acosta tells us some of those guidelines. It's expected to be busy on the roads this weekend, so if you are getting behind the wheel, here are some reminders from TxDOT on how to stay safe. 
Remember to always obey the speed limit. Be extra cautious driving through road construction. If you see a stopped emergency vehicle, tow truck or work truck, move over a lane and slow your speed. Now avoid driving between midnight and 6 a.m. to prevent drowsy driving and keep a safe distance between the vehicle in front of you. Drive with your lights on when the sun is not up so other cars can see you. And of course, always buckle up and please do not drink and drive. TxDOT also encourages travelers to follow CDC guidelines when stopping for breaks or destinations by always social distancing and wearing a mask. From home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. And time now, 512, 77 degrees out. Google is on the receiving end of some harsh criticism right now over its planned acquisition of Fitbit. We'll explain just ahead. And you try to get back in shape, but still can't go back to the gym. There are some great alternatives that everyone can do at home. Up next, we're going to tell you how you can exercise using items most people already have in their house. From prom dresses to soccer practices and new adventures. You hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Let's help protect them together. Because missing men B vaccination could mean missing out on a whole lot more. Ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. Every time you touch a surface, bacteria is left behind. Now consider how many times your family touches the surfaces in your home in 24 hours. Try new Microban 24. Spray on hard surfaces to kill 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria initially. Once dry, it forms a bacteria shield that keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours, even after multiple touches. Try new Microban 24. Available in multi-purpose sanitizing and bathroom sprays. This has been Medifax for Microban 24. Good morning, welcome back and happy Friday. 516 this morning, a new emotional face of the NBA video game covers. Not very smooth sailing for Google's planned acquisition of Fitbit and video gamers. Listen up because there's a big patriotic news. ABC's Kenneth Moten has all that and more in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Google's got a fight on its hands. The company is trying to complete its purchase of Fitbit, the maker of fitness trackers, but 20 advocacy groups from around the world are demanding regulators block the deal. They claim it would hurt competition and compromise privacy. Next, depictions of Kobe Bryant will be on the cover of upcoming NBA 2K21 games. They are being called the Mamba Forever Editions. One version comes out in September, the other for the holidays. This will be the third time Bryant is on the game's cover. Finally, Captain America has arrived in Fortnite just in time for Independence Day. Players can purchase a Captain America skin and use of his shield for about $20 from Fortnite's in-game store. Have a great holiday weekend. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. And more people will be starting working out from home again as a number of cases continue to rise here in Bear County. Erica Hernandez reports on some alternatives for home workout weights for those who don't own any equipment. If you find yourself struggling with an at-home workout, you're not alone. Many people find at-home workouts to be tough and unmotivating, but they don't have to be. Whether you're new to working out or just need a few ways to spice up your routine, try downloading some free apps on your smartphone. Apps like the Nike Training Club have videos on how to do a variety of exercises for different intensity levels. It's great if you just want to do a simple wake up warm up or a strong core and cardio session. Another benefit to working out at home, avoiding the equipment trap. Some sports health experts say in many gyms, the equipment choices were made based on cost rather than effectiveness. They add that it's not effective and does not work well with human anatomy. This equipment can also be dangerous for muscles and joints. Instead, here's a few ways to work around those machines without breaking the bank. In place of dumbbells, try using something similar in size and weight, like a 12-pack of soda, a milk jug, or laundry detergent. A basketball or a bag of flour can be the perfect substitute for a medicine ball, and you can use a stuffed backpack to replace a weighted vest. If you participate in weight training, you don't necessarily need a barbell to get the job done. Start off by using a 20-pound bag of dog food and go up from there. And during this pandemic, working out from home may not just be the safer option, but it can save you some money 
But most importantly, always remember to just stay active. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of working out and using household appliances, our own Nick Solis saying that he does 100 reps of the milk jug. Yep. <laughs> I saw it from, uh, I think it was Hulk Hogan. He, uh, he made a YouTube video and he said just use milk jugs instead of... Well, if it works for him. I know. Then I mean, <laughs> let's all do it. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 35 and 410 is looking good. Uh, 35 at Evans is looking great right now. Traffic slowing smoothly all over the, the highways. 35 and 1604, look at that. Looking great. Nice shot right there of the north side of San Antonio. 37 in Jones in the southeast side looking great as well. And uh, we'll do one more here. 1604 in Hausman, not a car on the road. Look at that. No one on the road, no rain. Mike, how are we looking for this weekend? There's going to be people on the road. You know, well, yeah, and actually it's looking like a very nice looking weekend. Uh, it is definitely going to be on the hot side. Temperatures will be about five, six degrees above normal. Um, so take it easy if you're outside, but at least the humidity is going to be dropping down in the afternoon. So it will be a bit more comfortable. Now, this is one thing we we're having to put up with. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful picture. But all that kind of orangey sky, thanks to that dust, which is definitely on the increase. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, we had that Saturday, which was just ridiculous looking. And it's going to be a fairly, fairly prom prominent this weekend. This morning, um, as Myra pointed out, a little bit clearer picture. 75 at Port SA, 77 here in town. Normal low is 74. And I don't think we're quite done dropping down yet. Maybe another degree or two. Uh, and these temperatures are much better than what they were yesterday. These temperatures, the dew point temperatures, are much better than what they were yesterday. We were widespread 70s, mid, you know, it was like common 74, 75 for these things uh, yesterday, these numbers, and now they are down. So it, albeit it is humid out there, but it's much more comfortable. And the heat index, a couple of notches above where it was, but these numbers, heat index readings, are down about 7, 10 degrees compared to yesterday. And that's because, well, of course, yesterday afternoon, we made it up to 99, partly due to the fact that the air dried out, which is, heats up a lot more easily. It doesn't take as much energy to heat up dry air as it does moist air. So uh, we're going to be up there heating up again because dew points are going to be dropping down again this afternoon. So in the shade, it's a little bit more comfortable. Yes, it will be on the, the hot side, definitely. Temperatures, uh, this model's going 90. I'm going 99 here in town. We'll still see some triple digits around here. Then we get into tomorrow, and yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot more in the way of some triple digits. And most computer models and uh, agree that, yeah, it's going to be the first time we hit uh, 100 here in town officially. But now back to today, as far as the forecast, heat index 99 and we're not really going to have a heat index to deal with in the heat of the afternoon because the humidity will definitely be uh, dropping down later on and dew point temperatures therefore the humidity are going to be low throughout the rest of the weekend even in toward Monday but then the humidity comes back up back into the picture and that's hopefully going to also be associated with some rain because there's a small rain chance coming in here by the weekend by the middle of the week pardon me but uh, just keep your fingers crossed, but it's not a good rain chance, unfortunately. Around the country, there's not a heck of a lot going on. We've got this high pressure, which is the dominant feature around here. It's going to be staying in place. A low is trying to develop off to the east of us, but we're not in the good position of it. You want the low to be on the left side of you to get better rain chances, but at least it's going to sort of agitate the atmosphere a little bit. Hopefully we get something from that. Uh, but then going into the latter part of next week, we first part of the week, we see a little bit of a decline in temperatures, and then it's going to go back up. So I think we're looking at more triple digits by then next weekend. 92 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and a high temperature today up to 99. A lot of triple digits out there today, and then I think we'll see a lot more tomorrow as well as Sunday. At least again, the air is going to be drier in the afternoons and got that small chance for some rain by the middle of the week. I wouldn't get your hopes too high for that and then back to the triple digits to finish up next week. It's about time for that, right? Once Rain? We get no, well, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> triple digits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we usually, you know, start to see them around this time. So, but you know, there have been some summers where we haven't seen triple digits. No kidding. About 20-some-odd really? times in mm. the course of uh, keeping the record. So, wow. I think the last one was, what, 2007, 9? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's been a bit. I think, yeah, it's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 523, 77 degrees out. Up next, if you're planning to stay home for July 4th, we'll tell you about some online celebrations you can stream right from your couch.
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Friday. 526 this morning. A lot of places around the country announcing the cancellation of their 4th of July celebrations. Yeah, but there will still be events happening online that you can take part in. CNN's Rick Damagella reports. My country to be. Sweet land of liberty. It's the 40th anniversary of PBS's A Capital Fourth. Hosted by John Stamos and Vanessa Williams, the nation's 244th birthday celebration features new performances and highlights from the event's 40-year history. The event will feature a tribute to America's frontline workers fighting the pandemic and live coverage of the annual fireworks display. A Capital Fourth airs on PBS stations Saturday from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern and will also be streamed on Facebook and YouTube. If you miss it, the event will be available available on VOD through July 18th. Austin, Texas band Fire From The Gods are hosting a 4th of July virtual barbecue. Fire From The Gods vocalist AJ Channer says he was inspired by the Juneteenth Tulsa block party to create the event to celebrate America's melting pot of cultures. Artists confirmed for the show include CeeLo Green, Richard Patrick of Filter, and Five Finger Death Punch. The event will benefit the social justice organization Until Freedom. Join the barbecue Saturday, July 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern on sounddrink.live. Streaming in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Time now, 527, 77 degrees home. Still ahead in our next half hour, like just about everything in 2020, this July 4th holiday weekend comes under the shadow of COVID-19. How the president is reacting to some recent numbers. And as new restrictions go into effect, we hear from some Texans who are losing their jobs for a second time because of this pandemic. Good morning, happy Friday, and if you have today off, happy weekend. It is July 3rd. We are headed toward the holiday weekend. A lot of people still have plans, mm -hmm. making some adjustments to this year's celebration. So, of course, we're all wondering, how are those temperatures going to shape up out there? Let's get a check of the forecast with Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it is going to be really darn hot out there this weekend, uh, but at least the humidity is going to be going down. We had the first taste of that yesterday. Temperatures did go up to 99 officially out there at the airport, but again, the humidity dropped in the afternoon, which is one of the reasons why it uh, did get up to 99 degrees, and we're going to be seeing that uh, throughout the rest of the weekend. 77 right now, 75 in Balverde. So temperatures are still a little bit above normal. Uh, but uh, it's a little more comfortable when you step outside this morning because these numbers, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere. Think back to yesterday, we most everybody was seeing 74s, 75s. I mean, it's still pretty humid, Castroville and Helotus, but uh, it's, it's, again, a little more pleasant out there. So we don't have as much of a heat index this morning because yesterday, again, we we're mid-upper 80s is what it felt like at this time of the morning. Now, dust, uh, if you notice yesterday, was a little more predominant, and that's going to be the situation today in the next couple of days. It is up somewhat. Everything else is on the low side right now. Temperatures 92 at noon going for 99 again today. Again, not too humid in the afternoon. So what humidity we have right now does drop down a little bit in the afternoon. That's going to be the situation over the weekend, but that number you can add another digit to it. We're looking at triple digits over the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, things are looking good right now. If you're heading, if you're heading to work, uh, look at all the green on the screen. Nothing going on. No accidents. Construction's very minimal, so uh, expect a smooth ride. You got time for a pit stop if you're heading to work. Maybe stop, put some gas or something. Because things look good. Look at these drive times. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 13 minutes. So good times there. All right, trans guide time. Let's see what we have outside. 1604 and housing still looking good. 281 and Grayson. Traffic's very, very light. Uh, 10 and 35, same. 410 and Babcock looking good. So everything's looking good around the city. Just make sure to get to work safely, wear that seatbelt and go the speed limit. Max, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. If you have today off or you have a long weekend, make sure to celebrate safely. Millions of Americans set to enjoy Independence Day this weekend. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, this pandemic has changed the way we're all celebrating this year. Fireworks will light up the sky in some cities this 4th of July weekend, but COVID-19 is still in the air and contagious. I hope we don't have a reprise of what happened on Memorial Day with lots of people out there carefree 
rather than careful. Johns Hopkins University reports more than 2.7 million confirmed cases in the U.S. and counting. If you turn your back on the virus, if you turn your back on science, it's going to bite you. And that's what's happening in most of the U.S., where we're seeing increases. President Trump, who's expected to celebrate an early Independence Day at Mount Rushmore Friday, says the U.S. has control of COVID-19. We're putting out the fires, but other places were long before us, and they're now, it's a life, it's got a life. And we're putting out that life because that's a bad life that we're talking about. Travel data company Arrivalist predicts more than 36 million Americans are hitting the road this holiday weekend. Health officials once again stress the importance of being cautious. It's not that we're against bars or drinking. It's just the science. If you have lots of people in an indoor place for a long period of time not wearing masks, you're going to have spread of COVID. I want everybody to have a good time, carefully. Prudently, please. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A reminder, the San Antonio River Authority is temporarily closing some of its parks, along with some large gathering areas along the river to help reduce crowds and hopefully stop the spread of COVID-19. These include Confluence Park on West Mitchell Street, portions of the Mission Reach section of the San Antonio River Walk, and River Crossing Park on South Loop 1604, all closed. Hike and bike trails along Museum Reach and the Mission Reach will remain open. We do have a full list of park closures for this 4th of July weekend in San Antonio and in Bear County on our website. Just head to ksat.com. And the numbers are mounting at the polls so far. More than 19,000 voters have cast a ballot in the runoff elections for Bear County. More than 10,000 voters, Democrats, more than 8,000 Republicans. And you can still cast your ballot. Early voting will continue through next Friday, July 10th. Election day is July 14th. And you can find polling information. Take a look at that sample ballot right now on our website. That is ksat.com slash vote 2020. In your morning headlines, FedEx is joining the call for the NFL and the owners of the Washington Redskins to change the team's name. FedEx is a key sponsor of the team that owns naming rights to the team's home stadium, FedEx Field, just outside of Washington, D.C. An organization called Change the Mascot is leading the fight to change the team's name and mascot, saying that it is racist. Team leaders have not commented on the name change request. And a new study finding that some of America's most common fireworks could be toxic. The study suggests that some fireworks emit lead, copper, and other toxins. The metals, which give fireworks their vibrant colors, were found to do damage to human cells and animal lungs. Harmful levels of lead were found in two of 12 types of commercially available fireworks sampled. And the study also only addresses the potential effects of one-time exposures to those metals found in the fireworks. Researchers say repeated exposure is a likely large concern. Time now, 536, 77 degrees out. Still ahead, an Eastside restaurant is known for having some of the best fried chicken in town. We'll take a look at how Chapman's Chicken is also serving up some life lessons to its employees. And next, President Donald Trump continuing to tout the latest record-breaking job numbers, but some politicians say it is too soon to be optimistic. And a look outside with live cam this morning. It is 77 degrees out there right now. Bit of a drop in the humidity, but our triple digits in the forecast for the weekend. We'll talk to Mike in a bit. Good morning and welcome back. 539, 540 this morning. A record 4.8 million jobs added in June and the unemployment rate falling to 11.1%. But with the coronavirus cases surging again in recent days, some workers are losing their jobs for a second time. Here's ABC's Rebecca Jarvis. Three out of 10 Americans who lost their jobs during the shutdowns now back at work. The president eager to relay those record-breaking jobs numbers to the American people. Today's announcement proves that our economy is roaring back. It's coming back extremely strong. But critics like presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden were quick to point out that many states have started rolling back or pausing plans to reopen parts of their economies this month, too. This report measures job gains as of June the 12th. In the days since, we've seen cases spiking around the country. Some businesses closed down again. The rollback sending employees like Dallas bartender Randy Heitzman, who returned to work in May, back to the unemployment line. 
I got furloughed with almost no notice from my job. This second round, I think, is going to be more stressful. Layoffs persistently high. For the 15th straight week, more than 1 million Americans have filed new claims for unemployment benefits. We saw long lines at this unemployment office in Oklahoma today. With that record rehiring we experienced in the month of June, analysts largely predict that the White House will allow the $600 additional weekly benefits to the unemployed to expire at the end of this month. But given the layoffs, those persistent layoffs we see across the country, they predict we will see additional stimulus for Americans soon. Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Time now, 541, 77 degrees out. Next, in the latest edition of Flavor Faves, we take you to a popular fried chicken restaurant that's also serving up some life lessons. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Friday. Just about 545 this morning. Chapman's Chicken on the east side serving more than just great fried chicken. The owner also serving up life lessons to his employees. Erica Hernandez has the story in this week's Flavor Faves. For most of his life, Eddie Chapman has worked in the food industry. His place off South WW White Road, Chapman's Chicken has been a staple on the east side for 18 years. If ours tasted like everyone else, you'd have no reason to come. Chapman is known for having some of the best fried chicken in town. This is a fast food chicken restaurant, and a lot of people are surprised because we do chicken. And what uh, people don't know is uh, we marinate everything we do, we marinate it. The chicken is marinated for 21 hours, the breading is their own, and it's cooked to perfection. Besides keeping his customers satisfied with this great food, Eddie goes over and beyond as an owner. I saw how a manager can impact his employees. And that's what I look forward to doing, to impact the people that come to work for me. And he makes the kids who work for him always learn valuable life lessons. If they're flunking school, I take them off my schedule. Or if they're acting grown around the house and the parents call me, I take them off the, my schedule so they can go back to remember who they are. And he makes sure they're all taken care of, keeping all 12 of his employees on staff during the current pandemic. Luckily, he's been able to stay open the entire time as his customers keep coming in. I thank God for every last one of my customers because they could have went anywhere else. Chapman's is open every day of the week, and to get a closer look at their menu, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And staying with your food news, Whataburger rolling out a new look for their restaurants in partnership with the Business Journal. We've published an article on the new look that's expected for the San Antonio-based burger chain. Officials acknowledge their iconic A-frame has become a link to the past and an important point in their new concept. Another important change, more capacity for fryers in the new models. And we have that full article right now. Just head to ksat.com. All right, Myra, on the hot seat, okay. what is your go-to Whataburger order? Whataburger order, I do the chicken tenders. Can't go wrong. Yeah, but well, you got the Texas toast. You got to get mm. the gravy, though. To me, that's, that's, that's a big win. That's me. That's Officer Solis, what do you got? Oh, man, it's going to be a number five with bacon, mayonnaise, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yeah, a side of jalapeno ranch, and I'm happy for the rest of the day. But uh, to save calories, I get a Diet Coke. Huh? <laughs> all right, let's talk some traffic here. Things are looking good. Uh, all around the city, green on the screen. You have a smooth ride if you're headed to work. Let's take a look at the transit guide. 35 and 410 on the northeast side, looking good. 35 and Evans on the north side. That's looking great there. Uh, 35 and 1604, smooth sailing. And uh, we'll do one more here. Let's see what we got. 37 at Jones on the southeast side, looking great. Had yeah, that one all set up, ready to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was Mike, can you beat that? I don't know what the number is for it, but uh, what I, I mean, the burger is great, but the patty melt. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, breakfast hours, honey butter chicken biscuits. See, that's my all day order. Oh, can't go wrong. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's one problem with the patty melt, though, mm. and I didn't realize this the first time I got it. It's two patties. Like, and, the but more I the eat, merrier. Well, I know, but I mean, nothing I don't wrong eat with that, that much. But I'm like, oh, God. And then I end up eating the whole thing. So <laughs> that, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, the patty melt. So I got it. The fried chicken now water. I know. Yeah. I know. We're all really. Hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> Life cereal waiting for me. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> mm. but I like it. It's the cinnamon. That's good. So, let's get back to the topic at hand. Yes. Um, it was hot yesterday, and it was a beautiful afternoon. The humidity did drop down, and notice how well gorgeous view of the sun. 
this picture is not quite as hazy looking as one from last half hour with the orangey haze from the uh, African dust hanging around here, but there is still some of it out there and you're going to be noticing that today as well as over the weekend. It is now. Granted, it is still humid out there, but it's much more pleasant this morning than what it has been the past couple of days. 77 in town, 74 Balverde. Uh, temperatures are down about five, six, seven degrees com degrees compared to yesterday. And the dew point temperatures, albeit still in the 70s, these numbers are down about uh, three, four, five degrees compared to what it was yesterday. We had a lot of 74s and higher than that on the map yesterday, so it is more comfortable out there. We don't have as much of a heat index. These numbers are down anywhere from say seven to 10 degrees compared to what they were yesterday. And we will see the humidity drop down later on today. So it's going to allow temperatures dry air heats up a lot more easily. It doesn't take as much energy as moist air does. And so we are going to see temperatures getting up into the upper nineties and a lot of triple digits again today. And uh, that's what the computer models are indicating. I'm going for 99. This one says 98. And then tomorrow I think it's pretty much pretty much going to be a sure thing that we hit 100 here in town tomorrow as well as on Sunday. It'd be the first time officially out there at the airport that we hit 100 this season. Back to today, heat index forecast 99. So because of the dry air, we're not going to have as much of a heat index to, uh, to deal with later on today. And dew points are going to be staying on the lower side all the way through the weekend. And that has been consistent for the past couple of days, which means it's going to be in the shade fairly pleasant, albeit Yes, it is going to be on the hot side this weekend. Now, as far as any cloud cover, we do have some out there right now, but that's going to be going away by later on this afternoon. And there are no big systems coming on in here anytime soon. So therefore, we don't have any great rain chances anytime soon around the area. Now, as far as the uh, dust is concerned, that's going to be, like I said, kind of sticking around here for the, uh, the next couple of days. High pressure is the dominant feature around the area. And it's not right on top of us, but close enough. And we're kind of going to be in between that and a low. This low is not going to be close enough to really do anything by Sunday. We are going to be on the sinking side of it. So therefore, that's going to help to uh, heat things up. And by the first part of the week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, enough of a little disturbance around here, perhaps to give us a slight chance for some rain but not a great chance, unfortunately. And then going into the latter part of the week, it looks like that high is going to sort of strengthen a little bit, and that means we are going to be heating back up after a slight decline in temperatures the first part of the week, heating up by the end of next week. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and a lot of sunshine out there. High temperature up to 99 again today, about 5 degrees above normal, not overly humid in the afternoon, so again, a bit more comfortable in the afternoon. And then tomorrow, Sunday, looking for triple-digit temperatures. And Monday, maybe down a degree or two with a, a couple more clouds. Chance of rain, perhaps Monday, a shower or two, a thunderstorm or two, Tuesday and Wednesday. I wouldn't get really excited about this, but at least there's a small chance for it. But uh, other than that, there's no decent rain chance. And it was a dry June. And yes, it was. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We'll After wait. At least a wet May, but yeah, and aquifers dropping real quick too. So. All right. We'll wait for that boost. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 551, 77 degrees out. Up next, a look at the virtual reality game, which puts you inside Tony Stark's Iron Man suit, releasing today for PlayStation VR. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the holiday weekend warning about those climbing number of coronavirus cases topping 50,000 again Thursday. Now more than 100 frat members at one school all say that they tested positive. Hospitals are feeling the strain and beaches have been linked to outbreaks. The mayor of hotspot Myrtle Beach will join us live on GMA. Sir, you better suit up. There's a world that needs saving. If you've ever dreamed of being inside the Iron Man armor, now's your virtual chance to experience what it's like to be Tony Stark in Marvel's Iron Man VR. Tony, quit screwing around. Just building the suspense, Nick. The experience is exclusive to Sony's PlayStation VR system. Marvel's Iron Man VR is the ultimate VR fantasy where we pair all the great things about virtual reality with one of the world's most famous and amazing superheroes, Iron Man. Is all it takes. Creating a VR game based on one of the most popular superheroes was no easy task. One of the most challenging things was flight. And um, the cool thing, though, was that in order to help solve that problem, all we had to do was look to the IP. 
You know, the way Iron Man's helmet maps to the VR headset and the way his thrusters map to the mood controllers, it really set a really, uh, like a firm foundation for where to start the development of a game. On the one side, it's a, it's a big, uh, ambitious VR powered uh, cinematic action game. But on the flip side, we also know that a big part of Iron Man is Tony Stark and that character that people are really, really fascinated with. So we want to put players in the, in the shoes of Tony Stark and allow them to understand what it's like to be your own worst enemy. The world needs you, Tony. The world needs Iron Man. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It is a yearly event that has a special place here at KSAT, the Head for the Cure 5K, an event we participate to honor our former news director, Jim Boyle. Jim passed away from brain cancer in 2014, but because of this pandemic, this year's event will be a virtual 5K on September 26th. The event will take place on Facebook Live and YouTube to share stories from survivors. You can participate as well. We have a link to register online at ksat.com. Those who sign up can run, walk, bike, or perform any sort of physical activity of their choosing. Just post a picture on Facebook and tag Head for the Cure. The foundation is offering a one-time discount code as we head into Independence Day. Just enter July 4th to get the discount. That code will expire on Monday. And that's it for this hour. We have a lot coming up at 6 a.m. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio. Local hospital leaders asking the community to do their part as hospitals here inching closer to reaching capacity. We're going to hear from a local coronavirus patient about how she is adapting. And taking a live look at those roadways, I-10 and crosswords, we've been checking in with Officer Nick Solis throughout the morning. We have seen green all throughout San Antonio. We're going to check in with him in just a few moments. Get your latest traffic update. You will wear a mask and you will do what the mayor and the judge have told us to do. That is Dr. Ian Thompson at Christa Santa Rosa Hospital on the increased spread of the pandemic. We're gonna see how it is impacting our community during the holiday weekend. No social distancing expected at the president's event in Mount Rushmore tonight. I'm Inez de Liquitera in Washington and I'll have all the details coming up. Look outside with live cam this morning, 77 degrees as you start your Friday off. As we head toward the 4th, will we be seeing triple digits finally? We'll check with Mike in a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Friday. If you already have a long weekend, happy start to the weekend. It is July 3rd. Thanks for being with us this morning as we head toward the 4th of July. A lot of holiday plans. So, Mike, let's ask the question. Are we going to see 100? You yes. seem excited about it. Is that how I see Do you want to break into That's the triple not, digits? I think you're misinterpreting that. You're excited about it. <laughs> I like the triple Pirate digits. is not. So, uh, today I think we hit 99, but there's a very good chance over the weekend that we hit 100 degrees. All right. Uh, the nice thing, though, if you recall yesterday in the afternoon, we did get up to 99, but the humidity had dropped off, and so it was a more pleasant just to be outside in the shade. And that's going to be the situation again today as well as over the weekend. This morning, it's also more pleasant compared to uh, what we had around here the past couple of mornings. We are in the mid 70s right now. Normal low 74, so in the ballpark. But these numbers are definitely down compared to yesterday, albeit still humid out there when you have dew points in the 70s. But uh, we, yesterday it was widespread 74, 75, so we are down. It is a little more comfortable and we don't have as high heat index readings. Uh, these numbers are down about so say uh, 5 10 degrees compared to what they were yesterday. Mold is low. Same thing with pigweed and grass dust though has been going up and it's going to continue to be uh, sticking around throughout the weekend. Temperatures this morning we may drop down another degree or so and then we're going to start to heat up fairly quickly. As the humidity drops, temperatures go up much more quickly. So we'll be up to 92 degrees at noon and then up to 99 for a high temperature later on today with plenty of sunshine. Like I said, a little more comfortable being outside in the shade. Same situation over the weekend. We're going to kind of squint and see if we can see anything as far as any rain way down the road because 
It's not looking good. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis, and it's been pretty quiet morning. Still the case? Quiet, yes, but now we just got one accident okay. right now. Possibly one car vehicle accident. Very minimal details on it right now. Other than that, it may be in between uh, West Military and Calabria on the northbound lanes of 410. It looks like it's a uh, a uh, vehicle facing the wrong way and was possibly smoking. We will, oh, well, was, yeah, uh, on fire. So uh, I'll get you more details on this accident. Uh, SAPD is still trying to find it right now, and hopefully everybody's okay there. All right, here we go. Trans guide time, 35 and 410. That's looking still good. 35 and Evans on the north side. Very light traffic all around the city right now. That's looking good. What else do we have here? 35 and 1604, same. Uh, looking good there on the north side. Very smooth and 37 in Jones on the southeast side. Looking great. All right, everyone, please have a wonderful, wonderful day and uh, stay safe. Myra. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police shutting down an illegal gambling operation overnight on the city's northwest side. Police were called out to the, to a stabbing in the 1800 block of Bandera, but when they got there, they found a gambling room instead. Police say there were gambling machines and nearly 20 people inside. Two of them were arrested and the rest were given citations. CPS Energy responding to an emergency call overnight after a crash led to a gas leak. Police say this all happened here in the 4500 block of Gardendale. That's near Fredericksburg Road in Wurzbach. Police on the scene telling us a man crashed his car into a gas main pipeline near the Winbury Apartments. Police in the area say they could actually hear the natural gas flow out of that pipe. CPS Energy was able to fix it quickly, though. Nobody needed to be evacuated from those apartments. Police say the driver right now being evaluated for a DWI. And the latest update here in Bear County, we have 374 new confirmed COVID-19 cases for a new total of 12,878. The death toll increasing as well by four, bringing the total now to 115 people. The number of recoveries has increased to more than 5,100 patients, but there are still 7,600 people fighting this illness. Hospital capacity, meanwhile, now at just 13%, meaning there are only 574 staffed hospital beds available. That's a big change compared to just the day before when it was at 27%. Hospital beds at BAMC and the VA hospital no longer included in this hospital capacity calculation. Since they're military hospitals, not everyone can be treated there. Meanwhile, some local hospitals actually using the pediatric ICUs to make space for incoming patients. A local woman is sharing her experience with COVID-19. 24-year-old Nicole Miranda was quarantined after recently finding out that she tested positive. Miranda says she is taking extra precautions now at home since she lives with her parents. She says she does not know where she contracted the virus. Meanwhile, local hospital leaders again asking the community to do their part as hospitals inch closer to reaching capacity. Wear your mask, wash your hands. It does happen that you can get it. Some people may tell you that it's just like the flu, except it's 50 times more likely to kill you than the flu is. Harrison says two weeks ago they had 75 positive COVID-19 patients at Methodist Hospital. As of last night, they were at 343. And if you're looking to get tested, big news this morning. The testing site at Pre-K for SA West has been canceled, but the walk-up testing site at Kazin Middle School will continue to be up and running starting at 10 a.m. going to 2 p.m. this afternoon. 300 free tests will be conducted. This is on Gillette Boulevard. The walk-up testing site also up and running Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. as well. Meantime, Texas State University campuses in San Marcos and Round Rock are now switching gears as coronavirus cases continue to rise. The university had originally planned to have some students return to face-to-face -face learning on Monday. Now the university is planning to stick with remote learning at least until the fall semester. In a statement, the university says, quote, the only courses that will remain face to face are those that require a face to face component for licensure or degree requirements, end quote. President Donald Trump and Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden starting to become more and more vocal ahead of this holiday weekend. It could be a sign that the 2020 presidential campaign feels like it is finally getting underway four months out from Election Day. ABC's Inez de la Quintero with the very latest. Good morning. President Trump kicking off his Independence Day weekend with fireworks tonight at Mount Rushmore. No social distancing is expected. 
prompting fears the event could act as a super spreader for COVID-19. As he faces growing backlash for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, President Trump gearing up for a 4th of July celebration at Mount Rushmore. Thousands expected to attend. South Dakota's governor revealing there would be no social distancing and that masks would be optional, prompting concern from Native American leaders worried the president's photo op may put tribal members at risk. We won't be social distancing. We're asking them uh, to come, be ready to Large parts of the country are experiencing an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases, something 2020 rival Joe Biden calls a direct consequence of... of Donald Trump's bungled leadership and the total mismanagement of this crisis from the start. But President Trump insists... Our health experts continue to address the temporary hotspots in certain cities. The president choosing instead to focus on the economy. New unemployment numbers showing three out of 10 Americans who lost their jobs during the shutdowns now back at work. And overnight, we learned that Vice President Pence had to delay a trip to Arizona earlier this week after Secret Service agents tested positive for COVID-19. It's the second time in as many weeks that Secret Service agents have tested positive while preparing for a presidential or vice presidential trip. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. And with the 4th of July weekend, more travelers expected to be on the roads for trips and for getaways. Texdot has released its road safety reminders for Texans out on the roads. Sarah Acosta tells us some of those guidelines. It's expected to be busy on the roads this weekend, so if you are getting behind the wheel, here are some reminders from Texdot on how to stay safe. Remember to always obey the speed limit. Be extra cautious driving through road construction. If you see a stopped emergency vehicle, tow truck, or work truck, move over a lane and slow your speed. Now avoid driving between midnight and 6 a.m. to prevent drowsy driving and keep a safe distance between the vehicle in front of you. Drive with your lights on when the sun is not up so other cars can see you. And of course, always buckle up and please do not drink and drive. TxDOT also encourages travelers to follow CDC guidelines when stopping for breaks or destinations by always social distancing and wearing a mask. From home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. CPS Energy offices, customer service centers, and all call centers will be closed today in observance of Independence Day. However, the CPS Energy app and website will still be up where you can adjust your service, make payment arrangements, and update your info if needed. If you need to contact someone for a natural gas or electric emergency, you can call 210-353-HELP. All of the operations will reopen after the 4th of July. And via ticket windows closed today because of the holiday, but you're still going to be able to buy a ticket and plan your trip, but it has to be through the Via Go mobile app. The call center will also be open from 8 a.m. to 5 every day. The buses will follow the essential service schedule today, and they will run on the Sunday schedule this weekend. You can find all the information on what is closed and what is open this weekend right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And time now, 611, 77 degrees out. So to come, taking a road trip used to be as easy as hopping in the car, just heading out. But we'll find out later how the pandemic has impacted that summer classic. And as COVID cases continue to rise here in San Antonio, you may find yourself quarantined at home with no access to the gym. But after the break, we're going to give you ways that you can exercise with things you can already find around your house. Look outside with live cam if you're heading outside to do some exercise today. You might want to hit it pretty early. We're going to talk those temperatures and see if, when and if we're going to hit those triple digits coming up. If you find yourself struggling with an at-home workout, you're not alone. Many people find at-home workouts to be tough and unmotivating, but they don't have to be. Whether you're new to working out or just need a few ways to spice up your routine, try downloading some free apps on your smartphone. Apps like the Nike Training Club have videos on how to do a variety of exercises for different intensity levels. It's great if you just want to do a simple wake up warm up or a strong core and cardio session. Another benefit to working out at home, avoiding the equipment trap. Some sports health experts say in many gyms, the equipment choices were made based on cost rather than effectiveness. They add that it's not effective and does not work well with human anatomy. This equipment can also be dangerous for muscles and joints. 
Instead, here's a few ways to work around those machines without breaking the bank. In place of dumbbells, try using something similar in size and weight, like a 12-pack of soda, a milk jug, or laundry detergent. A basketball or a bag of flour can be the perfect substitute for a medicine ball, and you can use a stuffed backpack to replace a weighted vest. If you participate in weight training, you don't necessarily need a barbell to get the job done. Start off by using a 20-pound bag of dog food and go up from there. And during this pandemic, working out from home may not just be the safer option, but it can save you some money. But most importantly, always remember to just stay active. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, Nick Solis. Officer Solis, tell us the tricks of the trade. You're stuck at home? Give us the workout tips. All right, well, it's all, I, I always go to the typical World War II workout where all you need is push-ups, sit-ups, three miles, and uh, some rope, and you're, you're good to go. Hey, there <laughs> you go. They protected the country like that, working out like that. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen. Things are looking good out there. Look at this outside. 1604 in Hausman. That looks great. I can't believe that. 281 in Grayson. Man, it's very smooth all over the city right now, 10 and 35. I also wanted to say, there was, I reported an accident earlier. It looks like someone just called that in, but the vehicle was fine. It was not an accident on the northbound lanes of 410 and Northwest Military, and things are looking great all around the city. Back to the push-ups and sit-ups. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the experts say that's a good core there you workout. Go. Oh, absolutely. And I've seen on a lot of um, you know mom blogs and stuff mm, during this yeah. quarantine, wine bottles. Ooh, <laughs> do you treat there it is. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, and your, uh, if you have steps in your house. Yeah, you there you go. That. Mm -hmm. Great way to, to do that. What about people who want to, want to work outside this? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that phase. Uh, you gotta, right, because it is going to be very hot. At least the humidity is going to be dropping down later yeah. on today, so a little more comfortable. But you really have to watch it in situations like this with the, you know, because if you're in the shade, that's one thing. If you're out in the direct sun, you know, add 10, 15 degrees to uh, reported temperatures because the sun is actually heating you up along with feeling what the air temperature is. Yesterday, beautiful uh, view and kind of the sun in a little bit of the haze and another windmill in that picture. Love these windmills. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Temperatures have been holding fairly steady. We may drop another degree or so in the next uh, hour or two. And it is down compared to yesterday. Temperatures are. It's more pleasant this morning, albeit still humid, but dew point temperatures are actually down compared to yesterday. So we don't have quite the, uh, the heat index like we had at this time when it was about, what, 85, 89 degrees around much of the area. So we're in the uh, low to mid 70s, even a couple of upper 70s around here. And later on today, like yesterday, the humidity, dew point temperatures, and therefore the humidity are going to be dropping down. So it will be more pleasant in the afternoon. At least we're going to be seeing that over the next couple of days as well. So heat index, now one point uh, a couple of days ago, the heat index was about 105, 106. Yesterday, it wasn't as bad in the afternoon, and that's going to be the situation again today. So we've got a forecast heat index of 99, and I'm going for 98, 99 for high temperature today. So the air is going to be dry enough to where it really won't feel that much hotter than the actual air temperature. Air temperatures uh, tomorrow, we're looking at a lot of triple digits around here, and I think it's a very good bet that we see our first triple digit reading of the season here officially out at the airport tomorrow. If not today, it's going to be a real close call today, obviously, like it was yesterday. Uh, dew point temperatures are going to be staying on the low side through the weekend, so it'll be a comfortable weekend. Even though it's going to be really hot out there, it's not going to be overly oppressively humid. Uh, we've got a few low clouds hanging around. Those are going to be clearing out, and we'll go through that pattern each and every day. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine around here. And there's really no big systems going on around the, uh, around the country as of right now. Typical summertime pattern, high pressure is kind of dominating things. There's going to be a little bit of a low trying to develop out here sometime maybe late Sunday into the first of the week. Hopefully by the middle of the week, we see a couple of showers trying to develop. It's not a really good chance at all. Uh, slim to none, basically, I think maybe, you know, one or two of them here and there. And then after that, uh, the high is going to build in. It's going to start to strengthen a little bit, too. So it looks like uh, we're really going to start to heat up as we go into next the latter part of the week and next weekend as well. Today, good looking day. Going to be hot, but at least the humidity will drop down later on this afternoon. 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a lot of sunshine out there this afternoon. 99 for a high temperature. Tomorrow, we make it up to 100. Same thing on Sunday. Monday, 
A few more clouds around here. Same thing Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe a couple of showers or a scattered thunderstorm. I guess more wishful thinking almost than anything. And then back to the triple digits, it looks like to finish up next week. It is July, after all. It is July. Any good plans out there? Yeah, we really don't have anything, you know, specific. Just maybe enjoying, relaxing over the weekend. Yeah. So. Same. Enjoying each other. Amazoning. As we have been for months. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a new program to stream. So. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 621, 77 degrees out. Still ahead, summer road trips. As much a part of summer as fireworks and trips to the beach. Well, in today's GMA First Look, we'll take a look at how that summer classic has been impacted during this pandemic. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Ready to shine from the inside out? Try Nature's Bounty Hair, Skin, and Nails Gummies, the number one brand to support silky hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. Beauty comes naturally, only from Nature's Bounty. Ever wonder where the capital A in Chick-fil-A came from? It started with grade A, top quality chicken. But we believed everything, not just the food, should be grade A. A is for all the little things we do to bring you our best every day. To me, the A in Chick-fil-A is for above and beyond. I know that I, I need encouragement right now, and I know that our guests need encouragement. It's about making sure that they know that we care about them and that we're going above and beyond for them in all the details. Doing the things we love can be painful. Asper Cream's triple effect provides targeted relief, works in minutes, lasts for hours. Love hurts. Asper Cream works. In this morning's GMA First Look, the surprising way the coronavirus is changing the summer vacation. Millions hitting the road and heading to rural destinations like mountain regions for hiking and exploring. We've never seen anything like this. Heather Greenwood Davis is a National Geographic contributing writer. A lot of people are going to cabins. They're going to rural areas. Yeah, for sure. So things like dude ranches or short term rentals or national parks. Airbnb telling us 20 percent of all bookings this weekend are rural areas. Cabins are among the most searched on the site. A huge shift from this time last year. Since April, 60 percent of the bookings are within 300 miles of a person's home. And coming up at 8 a.m., the must know tips to get the most out of your summer vacation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Now to consumer news this morning, Google has a fight on its hands. The company is trying to complete its purchase of Fitbit, the maker of those fitness trackers. But 20 advocacy groups from around the world are demanding that regulators block that deal. They claim it would hurt competition and compromise privacy. And Kobe Bryant, the new cover of the upcoming NBA 2K21 games. They'll be called the Mamba Forever editions. One version coming out in September. The others are for the holidays. This is going to be the third time that Kobe is on the cover. And time now, 626, 70, 70 degrees out. One local restaurant not only cooking up some good meals, but teaching employees some valuable life lessons. We'll see what's happening inside Chapman's Chicken in our next half hour. The family's home south of downtown goes up in flames, but firefighters are not exactly able to go rushing in. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why. What you do today will determine what happens two weeks from now, whether you're in the emergency room with no beds in the end. A warning from a local doctor ahead of the holiday weekend. We'll see how the coronavirus is impacting communities around the country for the 4th of July. Now let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 77 degrees to start your Friday. And for so many of you, start your 4th of July weekend. We're gonna check in with Mike see if we are going to crack those triple digits. Good morning. It is Friday, July 3rd. Whew, we are already in July. <laughs> it is hot out there. And probably going to get hotter. Mike, are we going to yeah. see 100 degrees? Yes. <laughs> when? The end. 
that the question's that was up. it great forecast <laughs> uh, I see, yeah, I see accidents though on the map. <laughs> we got two accidents right there, right in the same area, 151 and then one on uh, northbound 410. That They did find that accident after all, so we have two accidents right in the span of each other on the far west side. Okay, more on that in a second. Of course, yesterday in the afternoon, we now officially got up to 99 degrees out there at the airport. Uh, we had lower humidity, so it was more comfortable in the afternoon. It didn't feel as hot as it did the previous day. That's the, uh, I guess, the, the plus side to the forecast is the fact that we will see humidity dropping. Now, as a matter of fact, it is more comfortable out there this morning because these numbers, dew points are down compared to what they were at this time yesterday, only in the, say, low 70s, a couple of, uh, well, 74 right now, Castroville, but down about four degrees on average from uh, where it was. So we have heat index readings, yeah, mid to upper 70s, low 70s in the hill country, down about 10 degrees compared, again, to what it was yesterday. Uh, dust is... You could see it yesterday. It's kind of increasing a little bit. It's going to be sticking around through the weekend. Mold and pigweed grass are all on the low side. So a bit more pleasant this morning. It's not that just that wet towel hitting you in the face when you walk outside this morning. Mostly sunny, hot, but not overly humid this afternoon. So heat index will not be a huge factor today, nor really uh, the next couple of days. Sunny, hot, plenty of triple digits around here. I think we've got a much better chance of hitting it. It's going to be close today, but much better chance of hitting it tomorrow as well as on Sunday. And then hopefully by the middle of next week, we get a shower or two around here because, boy, we sure need that. Details in just a couple of minutes. Once again, time saver traffic, and you said those two accidents are about in the same spot? Yeah, same spot. The one I reported earlier, it looks like they did find that after all. And uh, then another accident came right here just uh, northwest of it or northeast of it. Uh, so two accidents, first one being here. It's going to be uh, southbound uh, 151 in between uh, uh, West Military Drive and Penn Road. You can already see traffic is heavy there. It is blocking two of those three lanes on southbound 151. Uh, so if you do have to go that way, expect a delay. I know a wrecker is on the way there. Hopefully they can get it cleared up soon. Now this accident I reported earlier, they couldn't find it at first. They found it. It was actually more south of where they initially reported it in between Calabria and uh, West Military. It's also, it's going to be a little bit past Marbach. I'm going to show you some trans guide footage of that right here. It's uh, there's that 151 uh, ramp coming down uh, from uh, uh, to 410 northbound and there's the accident on the northbound lanes just uh, you could say just north of Marbach there so uh, not causing too much uh, traffic uh, j delay yet but um, it will here in the next 30 minutes if it's still there but hopefully they can get that cleared soon well just everyone have a great day be safe out there Max Thank you, Officer Solis. Right now, we are staying on top of late breaking news. A fire driving some people out of their home and south of downtown. It broke out just before 430 this morning, 200 block of Pendleton. That's near South Brazo Street. Our Katrina Weber is live downtown with a report this morning. Good morning, Katrina. We understand the smoke and flames, not the only challenges for firefighters today. Good morning. That is correct. Firefighters say that they also had a problem in gaining access to the home to put out the fire because of what they described as a hoarding situation. Although all of the items inside the home made it tough for firefighters to get inside, the people who lived there were able to get out on their own. By the time the fire was put out, it had spread through a back room and into the attic, causing quite a bit of damage. Firefighters say no one will be able to live there for now and no one was hurt. They plan to call in code compliance to check out the home. They've also called in arson investigators to figure out how this fire started. Now, to make matters worse for firefighters, they say some of their trucks were delayed in getting to that fire because of a passing train. Reporting live near live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A reminder, San Antonio River Authority temporarily closing some of its parks along with some large gathering areas along the river to help reduce crowds and stop the spread of the pandemic. These include Confluence Park on West Mitchell Street, portions of the Mission's Reed section of the San Antonio Riverwalk, and River Crossing Park on South Loop 1604. They're all going to be closed today. And hike and bike trails along Mission Reach and, Mission and Museum Reach will remain open. And we have a full list of all those park closures for this 4th of July weekend in San Antonio and in Bear County. They include city and county parks all around town. You can check out that list right now on KSAT.com. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now forecasting up to 160,000 deaths here in the United States by July 25th. That's only three weeks away. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump is once again making the argument that the new cases are rising at a record rate because there's been more testing. ABC's Kenneth Moten with the latest.
This morning, hospitals across the country are bracing for the 4th of July. It makes me really nervous. Um, I know after the 4th that we could potentially see another surge. If things don't change and people don't take it a little more serious in the next two weeks, you know, who knows where we will be. Huge crowds and holiday parties threatening to set off a new surge of coronavirus infections, even as the nation's top doctor warns the U.S. is already at risk of losing control. It's quite disturbing. And we're setting records practically every day of new cases that clearly is not the right direction. Hospitals in Arizona are struggling with a surge of patients. And in Texas, cities are closing beaches in hopes of controlling crowds. The governor reversing course, now mandating masks after one third of the state reported a record number of new cases Thursday. COVID-19 is not going away. In fact, it's getting worse. Now more than ever, action by everyone is needed. Houston now reporting one in five COVID-19 tests are coming back positive. Some ICUs have hit full capacity. Meanwhile, in Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks, where Memorial Day pool parties made national headlines due to the lack of social distancing, authorities are trying to prepare for record crowds this weekend. While Washington state is now allowing businesses to refuse service to anyone not wearing a face covering. And in West Hollywood, no mask will now cost you $300. It comes as California reports nearly 10,000 new cases in just 24 hours. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Now the latest in the polls. So far, more than 19,000 voters have cast a ballot in the runoff election for Bear County. More than 10,000 were Democrats and more than 8,000 Republicans. And don't worry, you can still cast your ballot. Early voting continues through next Friday, July 10th. Election day set for July 14th. You can find out all that polling information and take a look at the sample ballots right now on our website. Just head to ksat.com vote 2020. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled against easier absentee voting measures in Alabama. Last night's ruling will uphold the laws currently in place in that state. Alabama requires absentee voters to submit a copy of their ID when voting. They also have to provide a voter affidavit that has two witness signatures or notarization. A lower court blocked those requirements in a few counties where there have been an increase in COVID-19 cases, but the Supreme Court is allowing the procedure to stay in place. Attorneys say they will try other legal options ahead of the general election to lower those requirements. French President Emmanuel Macron says the country will now name a new prime minister later today. This comes as Edouard Philippe announced his resignation after recent local elections and in the country's response to the coronavirus. Macron told the local newspapers that he's looking to go on a new path to rebuilding the country after this pandemic. Home Depot is changing its rope sales practices nationwide after nooses were found hanging in one of its North Carolina stores. Home Depot released a statement saying it was appalled by the incident. It's the latest in a series of similar incidents at its stores in recent years. The company has now decided to sell shorter pre-cut lengths of rope instead of rope wrapped along large spools. And FedEx joining the call for the NFL and the owners of the Washington Redskins to change their team's name. FedEx, a key sponsor of the team, they actually own the naming rights to the team's home stadium just outside of Washington, D.C. The shipping company is joining the organization called Change the Mascot. They're leading the fight to change the team name and the mascot, saying it is racist. Team leaders have not commented on the possible name change just yet. Time now, 639, 77 degrees out. Still ahead, fried chicken, not just delicious, it can also be used to teach some valuable life lessons. After the break, we'll see how the owner of Chapman's Chicken on the east side is helping out employees. For most of his life, Eddie Chapman has worked in the food industry. His place off South WW White Road, Chapman's Chicken has been a staple on the east side for 18 years. But if I was tasted like everyone else, you'd have no reason to come. Chapman is known for having some of the best fried chicken in town. This is a fast food chicken restaurant, and a lot of people are surprised because we do chicken. And what uh, people don't know is uh, we marinate everything we do, we marinate it. The chicken is marinated for 21 hours, the breading is their own, and it's cooked to perfection. Besides keeping his customers satisfied with this great food, Eddie goes over and beyond as an owner. I saw how a manager can impact his employees. And that's what I look forward to doing, to impact the people that come to work for me. And he makes the kids who work for him always learn valuable life lessons. If they're flunking school, I take them off my schedule or 
if they're acting grown around the house and the parents call me, I take them off the, my schedule so they can go back to remember who they are. And he makes sure they're all taken care of, keeping all 12 of his employees on staff during the current pandemic. Luckily, he's been able to stay open the entire time as his customers keep coming in. I thank God for every last one of my customers because they could have went anywhere else. Chapman's is open every day of the week, and to get a closer look at their menu, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We have sports and we have baseball, America's pastime, perfect for Independence Day weekend. In 5A baseball, Team Liberty taking the field at Wolf Stadium, taking on Team Freedom for game one of the doubleheader for high school baseball. So let's go right to the highlights. Bottom of the first for Liberty, Stony Rhodes going deep right. It is over the right fielder's head. That is an RBI double. Liberty taking a 4-0 lead after two innings, but in the fifth, Freedom rings. Ooh, look at that, roping one shallow right to score. Cutting the Liberty lead down to three, four one in the fourth. Team Freedom rallying to win 12 to seven. The 6A seniors, all stars, taking to the field. Game two of the doubleheader. A long day of baseball. Top of the first. Team Stripes, Adam Sanchez at the plate. Bases loaded, ripping one down. Ooh, ball ricochets off the glove. Diving first baseman. That allows two runs to score. Stripes would lead by three after one. Team Stripes going on to win the game big 9-6, but the score didn't matter as much as the chance to play with their friends. It was bittersweet, you know. I haven't uh, had the chance to play with high school teammates since uh, March, so it was good to see everyone again. I haven't seen them in a few months, so it was fun. It felt great. Did one last time with them. Yep. Not many chances you can do that. I mean, I didn't think another chance to happen with them. At home, this is the only thing I was looking forward to, to be honest, and it was a great opportunity to be an all-star today. I mean, it was great that they did this for us because, yeah, the season did end tragically, but we got to play one last time, and it was awesome. And you see that cherry right on top with the fantastic fireworks and in the perfect long day of baseball. We have live sports, at least for the day. <laughs> you like doing sports, huh? I like doing sports. It's good. Everyone comes together during sports. There you go. Yeah, you got uh, you got the guys fired up in here. Oh, yeah. Vic liked it. You got me fired up, Max. That was pretty awesome. And uh, proud of those guys right there. Happy graduation. And I'm glad they got to play one more baseball yeah. game. Yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. Okay, so uh, still dealing with these two accidents right now. This is going to be southbound 151 at Penn Road. It is causing some major traffic delays. We are up to heavy traffic all the way uh, backed up all the way to 151. So this is southbound 151 at Penn Road. We have this accident uh, northbound southwest loop 410. It's actually in between 90 and Marbach, not 151 and Marbach, 90 and Marbach. We'll show you some trans guide footage. So earlier, this is this is actually 90 right there. That's a 90 ramp. Um, it looks like they just cleared it up. That's good news for everybody. But I wanted to show y'all here. I believe it's uh, this is another accident. 151 and 410 there on Pin Road where they have a, a two of the lanes blocked off and it was causing some major uh, traffic delays all the way back to 151. Keep that in mind if you're heading this way. This is southbound 151 at Pin Road. Well, the good news is not much rain on the roads. Looks yeah. like we're not going to have to deal with that for a while. No, and, well, the good news, bad news. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, maybe by the middle of next week, a couple of showers popping up. But, uh, you know, we can, we're definitely in need of some. But uh, this weekend, find a friend with a pool or. Ooh, yeah, look at that picture. Yeah, and I love the expression <laughs> on the dog's faces because it's kind of like, oh, what? We're, we're yeah, we're just yeah, so. living the life. And the caption, the dog days of summer, it's their pool. We just swim in it. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, find a friend with a pool and a uh, couple of broken clouds out there. We are going to see a lot more sunshine later on today. Yes, it is uh, warm, but nowhere near what it has. But I keep referring to yesterday and the previous couple of mornings where we had just ridiculously high humidity. I mean, it is still humid out there, but these numbers, dew points are definitely down compared to yesterday, a good four or five degrees. And so therefore we don't have as much of a heat index, uh, low mid 70s, couple of upper 70s here and there. And we will see, like yesterday, the humidity, the dew points drop down. Therefore, the humidity won't be as high in the afternoon. So it is going to be much more comfortable if you're in the shade later on this afternoon. So forecast heat index right around 99 degrees. That's what I'm forecasting for the high temperature today, right around upper 90s, 99. And so therefore, without the humidity, it, your body can cool itself much more efficiently, and that's going to be the situation over the weekend as well. And temperatures tomorrow, we are going to be getting up into the uh, triple-digit readings. 
Humidity is going to be staying on the lower side. Dew points will be staying in the afternoon. We'll have morning humidity, but in the afternoon they will be dropping down into the low 60s and 50s over the weekend. So it is going to be a comfortable weekend again in the shade, albeit still obviously hot. But then it looks like the humidity is going to be coming back in here starting off uh, now toward the middle part, or excuse me, the first and middle part of next week. Uh, a few of those clouds still hanging around here. They're going to be clearing on out by later on and not much is going on around the country as of right now, so there's not really any significant changes to our forecast, except for the fact we're going to creep up another degree or two going in toward the weekend. That high pressure is holding kind of firm around here, and that's going to be the dominant feature. Now, Lowe's going to try and develop. It's not going to be in a good spot to give us any rain chances. As a matter of fact, we're sort of on the sinking side of those two features, which means it's just going to be hot and heating up. At least we won't have the humidity to deal with, though. Now, by the uh, about first and middle part of the week, <clears throat> excuse me, perhaps we get enough of a, say, a weakness in the atmosphere to give us a couple of showers around here. That's about the best we can muster as of right now as far as any rain chances Tuesday into Wednesday. Then after that, it looks like that high is going to start to sort of strengthen, and that means it looks like we're going to be heating up going into the latter part of next week and then next weekend as well. So we're looking at triple digits this weekend and then more of them a week from now. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a lot of sunshine today, but lower humidity, so it'll be a comfortable 99 degrees. Again, not much of a heat index to deal with, just the actual air temperature. And then over the weekend, same situation. Some humidity, some clouds in the morning, and then hot temperatures in the afternoon. Maybe a couple of showers by the middle of the week. Hopefully it holds temperatures down a little bit, but then back to the triple digits late next week. Whew, I do like the graphic. 4th of July graphic. Got a little flag, you know, some fireworks. A lot of things have changed for the 4th, but at least this. This, this stays the same. With, right? Yes. Triple digits. All right. And the stars and stripes. Okay. And Mike's Here patriotic go. outfit. Oh. Got the red, white, and the blue. You got red, white, and blue. And my, and my flag, my flag cufflinks. Oh, well, there you so. go. Perfect. Yes. Well, they didn't see it, but we could see it. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. There it is. Thanks, Mike. 650, 77 degrees out. Well, whether it is a total remodel or just a simple task, we all want to feel good about our home improvement projects, right? Well, join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we take a look at how to successfully plan your next update. And as Mike was telling us, whew, 77 now, but we could see triple digits in the coming days. If you are out and about this weekend, make sure to be safe, be smart, wear that mask. Be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the holiday weekend warning about those climbing number of coronavirus cases topping 50,000 again Thursday. Now more than 100 frat members at one school all say that they tested positive. Hospitals are feeling the strain and beaches have been linked to outbreaks. The mayor of Hotspot Myrtle Beach will join us live on GMA. And in the news you need to know before you go, crews putting on a house fire just south of downtown. Police telling us this all broke out around 430 this morning. This is a 200 block of Pendleton. That's right near South Brazos and I-10. Firefighters called this a hoarder house, but they were able to put the fire out quickly. They say everyone inside did make it out safely. We're continuing to learn more about the story. We'll update it on KSAT on air and online at KSAT.com. All right, it is Friday. It is a weekend for so many people already. Let's take a look at those roadways. Yeah, right now we're still working on this accident. It's southbound 151 at Penn Road. This is a very a major accident and it's blocking traffic all the way back to 151 with the exit ramp or the entrance ramp from the access road onto 151 blocked off. Uh, this here it is right here. Um, still there. Uh, wrecker is on scene. Looks like fire is moving right now, but just keep that in mind that expect a delay if you're heading southbound 151. Mike, how's the weather? Well, it's actually not bad this morning. Obviously, we've got our clouds hanging around here. A couple of breaks uh, already, and we'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. 77 in town, 75 Randolph. Temperatures are down compared to yesterday. The humidity is also lower than yesterday. Dew point temperatures are down, so we don't have as much of a heat index right now. And we're not going to have much of a heat index later on today. It's going to be hot, same as yesterday, 99 degrees, but... Uh, It'll be kind of pleasant if you're in the shade. And this weekend, yeah, we're looking at some triple-digit temperatures and uh, hopefully some rain by the middle of next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank thanks so much guys. for being with us this morning. See you back here at 9 a.m.